before you start lesson four, make sure that you have done test A and the test masters and that you have gotten a hundred on that. If you haven't gotten a hundred, then you need to do it again. You can also just keep doing it even if you've got a hundred and try to improve your time. Just like keep track of how fast it takes you to complete it. The faster you can do it, the better. Now one thing we use number lines for is to compare different numbers, compare their size, how big they are relative to each other. And when we draw a number line, the first thing you do is just draw a line. And if you don't know, you denote a line by arrows on the ends. And that's how you define a line is it continues on in both directions forever. Of course, you can't draw it forever. So you put arrows on the end to show you're trying to describe that it continues on in those directions forever and ever. And then you put what are called tick marks on the line. And on the left side, you just kind of start with some number. It doesn't really matter what number you start with. The number line just has to have enough numbers to work for the type of problem you're trying to do. So for this one, let's just start with a negative 5. And then you just start counting negative 4, negative 3, negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Now, those numbers are called integers. In lesson 1, we talked about counting numbers which start with 1, whole numbers which start, which start with 0 and continue on forever. And then there's integers. Integers are all, they include whole numbers and counting numbers and negative numbers too. Integers don't have decimals after them like 2.1 or negative 3.5. They don't have decimal values. They just have digits. And they can be greater than 7, 8, 9. They could be 10, 100, 1,000, 1 billion, and so on. Now, like I said, number lines are used to help you determine if one number is bigger or smaller than a number, than another number. We've been using letters or variables sometimes to describe any number. In lesson three, we use letters to describe a missing number that we were trying to solve for. A lot of the math that you'll use later on, it's important to know what missing numbers are, how to work problems using missing numbers. So let's think about some missing numbers here and think about greater than, less than, or equal to another number. For example, if we wanted to write that A was greater than B, we can say A and this symbol B. That's saying A is greater than B. If we wanted to show that A was less than B, we would write A less than B. Those symbols are on your computer keypad. If you notice, they're usually down at the bottom right hand side. And then, of course, you should already know if you want to say that A was equal to B, you can write A equals B. So, the first symbol is your greater than, then less than, then equals symbols. Now, look at our number line that we have. Let's say we wanted to compare 2 and negative 2. There's a couple of ways that we could write this. We could say that 2 is greater than negative 2 because it's to the right. You always read a number line from left to right. The farther to the right you go, the bigger the numbers get. Another way we could write this is that negative 2 is less than 2. And of course we can't do this. 2 is equal to negative 2. We could say 2 is not equal to negative 2. We could put a slash through the middle of the equal sign to represent that. But the equal sign is not an appropriate symbol to use when we're comparing 2 and negative 2. Basically, it's not a good symbol to use when you're comparing two different numbers. Whether they're both positive or both negative or one's positive, the other's negative. If they're different, you compare them using greater than or less than symbol. Let's go ahead and use some practice problems. And what I want you to do with these problems, I mean, they look really, really easy. I want you to use a number line to describe that addition or subtraction process. 
work the first one with me and then see if you can do the second two on your own. So on the first one, let's draw a number line over to the side. And remember, we just need enough numbers on this number line to work the problem that we're trying to do here. And so let's just start with 0 and 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And we have plenty of numbers there. So what we can do there is we'll start, you always start at 0. And we have a 1, so 1 representing a movement of 1 on the number line, we would go to right there at the 1. And then for our next step, that's adding the 3 on, let's just put some dashed lines there and add 3 more to that. And that would get us right here to the 4. 1 plus 3 is 4. I mean, you know that, but that's how you would represent that on a number line. You make a movement of 1, then another movement of 3 to the right because you're adding to 1. You're making it greater. Adding means increasing or greater, so you move farther and farther to the right on a number line. Now let's do B and C. Pause the CD and try to figure them out on your own, though. On B, we're saying 3 minus 1, so we should be getting smaller. 3 minus 1, we know that's equal to 2. Let's just go ahead and make a number line, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. And we always start from 0 when we draw these, and we'll go to 3. So we go from 0 to 3 first, and then I'll put a dashed line up to represent the stopping of that first step. Now, minus 1, that means we'll go back the other way, one tick mark. And so we end up there at 2. And that should make sense. 3 minus 1 is 2. So thinking of it in terms of a number line, we would move to the right 3 and then back 1. Now, you might be thinking, why are we doing problems like this with this number line? The main reason is to help you work with negative numbers. Number lines help a lot in working with negative numbers and understanding negative numbers. And on practice problem C, that's what we're going to be doing here. And so let's make a number line. Let's just start it at negative 3. Negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2. Now, if you did this problem, you got it right then that's great. But if not, just remember that you're learning how to do this still. And first thing you do, you always start from zero and we'd go to the right one. And you always start with whatever the first number is in the problem. And then we'll put some dash lines up. Now minus three, that means we go back to the left three tick marks. So we go one, two, three. And see we end up at negative two. 1 minus 3 is negative 2. That is the right answer. Negative 2 is the correct answer for that problem. That may seem kind of strange that you get a negative result, but that's what you're going to start working with a lot more is these negative numbers. And that's where number lines come in handy is they help you understand how negative numbers compare to positive numbers. In practice problem D, I want you to arrange those numbers on a number line. Just arrange them in order. And that's one thing you can use a number line for as well, is helping you organize numbers in order. So let's just start this number line at minus 4. And we'll say minus 3, minus 2, minus 1, 0, 1, 2, 3. And that'll be plenty of numbers. Now to arrange these, let's just write the number above where it is on the number line. So here's minus 4. 2 is over here, positive 2. 0 is right there. And minus 1 is right there. And so there are the numbers in order. Minus 4, then minus 1, then 0, then 2. Now one thing you might be thinking about is we put a minus sign in front of these negative numbers. Why don't we put a positive sign in front of the positive numbers? So, like, why don't we have a plus sign in front of the 2 to say that's a positive 2? 
Well, it's understood that if you don't have a minus sign in front of a number, then it's positive. Zero is kind of weird. It's not positive or negative. It's its own special thing. It's just nothing. Zero. But any non-negative number that's also not zero, we assume that those are positive. We don't have to put a plus sign in front of them to say that they're positive. Look at practice problem E. It says to use digits and other symbols to represent that statement. The quotient of 6 and 2 is less than the difference of 6 and 2. Well, what do they mean by digits? Digits are just numbers, right? Remember in lesson 1 we said it was real important to know the difference between quotient, product, sum, and difference. Those help you know what operation you're talking about. And think about what the quotient of 6 and 2 is. Well, that would be 6 divided by 2. That's 3. That is less than the difference of 6 and 2, or 6 minus 2, which is 4. So we can say that 6 divided by 2 is less than 6 minus 2. That's how we would write that problem. A lot of times in your math class, you'll be wanting to use words or they'll give you a problem that is just in words and you'll have to make a math formula or a mathematical statement using digits and symbols like this. So this is good practice for problems later on. Now in problems F and G, I just want you to put the appropriate symbol in there or comparison symbol. What symbol would you use to compare those numbers or those relationships that are shown there. Just go ahead and pause the CD and figure out what you would do. Greater than sign, less than sign, equal sign. What would it be? So on F you would say 2 is greater than negative 7. You just have to think about a number line. Just think about a number line in your head and you can think, well, start with 0. 0 is called the origin on a number line. To the right would be 2. To the left of 0 would be negative 7. Numbers to the left are less than, so that means 2 must be greater than negative 7. And on G, you just have to look at the operations here. On the left side, you could even work it out. That's 12. On the right side is 11. 12 is greater than 11. So again, a greater than symbol would go in that box or circle. Now let's do a subtraction problem where the answer will be a negative number. You haven't really done many of these before except for that problem that we did with the number lines. What you do on a problem like this is just subtract the smaller number from the bigger one but you give the answer, you put a negative sign in the answer. 21 minus 30. Just think about that. If you move 21 to the right on a number line and then you move back to the left, 30, you would go past the origin, past 0, and you'd keep going. So we can say 30 minus 21. Just do subtraction of bigger minus smaller, and you'll have to borrow. So you have 10 minus 1 is 9, 2 minus 2 would be 0. Your answer is 9. Put a negative sign in front of it. Negative 9 is what it would really be. 21 minus 30 is negative 9. 30 minus 21 is positive 9. 21 minus 30, though, is negative 9. Let's do another one. 114 minus 267. Just think about your number line. You go to the right, 114, and then you go back to the left, 267. That's going to bring you past 0, past the origin, and continue on quite a way. So you know it's going to be a negative number. And that's where the number line helps you. Is you can just visualize that number line. Think about what's happening with this problem. Is my answer going to be positive or negative? And when you're subtracting a bigger number from a smaller one, always your answer will be negative. So go ahead and do the subtraction as normal. Bigger minus smaller. 7 minus 4 is 3. 6 minus 1 is 5. 2 minus 1 is 1. The answer, though, you need to put a negative sign back in. 267 minus 114 equals 153. But 
114 minus 267, that's a negative 153. Remember, as always, if you need more help, do the practice problems in the book as well. Mine are different from theirs, but they're identical concepts. Okay, well that's all for lesson four.